Uh, welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker, uh, speaker is uh, Imre Leader. Uh, he will be telling us uh, something um, Ramsey. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, I'll try and use the screen share. It seems to be working and we'll see how it goes. So I'm talking about some joint work with Paul Russell and Mark Walters. Can you see my cursor now when it moves? Okay, so use as a pointer. And um, it's in the area of Euclidean Ramsey theory. So I'll assume you know nothing at all about Euclidean Ramsey theory. So nearly the talk is going to be background, but it's very nice background about a conjecture or, or, or two conjectures. So here's the starting point. Suppose I gave you the following exciting configuration of two points. It's just two points at distance one, say in the line or in the plane. Okay, and you might ask the question, if you, is there a configuration a finite set S in R to the N, it's your choice of dimension, your choice of the set, such that whenever the points of S are K colored, you give them K colors, there exists a monochrome, I'll write mono, mono means monochromatic, i.e. all of one color. It'll save you time to write mono. Copy of X. So this is my, this is my X. Okay, so my question is, is it true? I give you a number K, so for every K. I tell you I will have K colors. Can you find a finite set somewhere so that whenever you K color it, you can find a copy of X, meaning two points one apart? And the answer is, of course, yes. Just take a, a K simplex. I mean, I mean, K plus one points all this is one from each other, and that obviously works. Okay. Oh, by the way, copy, of course, means a congruent copy. You, you can't expand your set. So this question does not say, can you find two points at some distance apart, which is your choice of the same color? They've got to be distance one. So copy always means a congruent copy. You can't expand it. Okay. Um, suppose instead I wanted the following X. I wanted, suppose this was my X. So an equilateral triangle, Suppose my X is three points all at distance one. <laughs> same question. Is there a finite set somewhere? Your choice of where it is. So when you K color it, there's a monochromatic copy of this. Of course there is. You just take two K plus one points or distance one. So that's also a yes with a two K simplex. Sorry, I think a K simplex has K plus one points. If you think a K simplex has K points, then of course I'm in two K plus one simplex. Okay. And this property these sets have is called being Ramsey. So as a definition, we would say, that X is Ramsey, X living in some Euclidean space, if for every K, there is a finite S in R to the N. Again, we can choose N, we can choose S, such that S K colored implies there exists a mono copy of so what we proved so far is that a two point set is always Ramsey and a equilateral triangle is Ramsey. Just by the way, um, X will always be finite. I won't ever say that. Um, if you ever wanted an infinite set, the answer is it's never Ramsey. So any infinite set you can destroy. And also, by the way, you might say, we asked for a finite set in R to the end. It's actually the same as the whole of R to the end. It doesn't actually matter. So you could say, it's equivalent definition. X is, um, if, if ever K, there's an N. So if you K color a whole of R to the N, there's a monocopy of X. It turns out to be the same thing. Okay, so we have some little examples so far. To generate some more examples, um, there's a nice little fact, which is if X and Y are Ramsey, then so is X cross Y. And by this, I mean that if this one 
is in R to the N, and this is in R to the M, then this, I mean the product set in R to the N plus M. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So for example, um, a line, a two point set cross a two point set is um, a rectangle. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna prove this fact. All I'll say is, if you've met any kind of Ramsey theory and you've ever met the words product argument, then this is an easy product argument. If you haven't met product arguments, this is a great exercise. So I would say, this is a nice exercise to do at some point. Once you've done the exercise, you'll, you'll know what a product argument is. Okay, but it's a, it's a nice fact. Okay, good. So rectangle, so what we're saying is, I'll keep this picture visible thus. All rectangles, or Ramsey, all cuboids, I mean, uh, you know, an A by B by C cuboid is Ramsey and so on. Right? So we're taking our two point property and doing the product theorem. Okay, and there's some nice conclusions from this. Hence, every right angled triangle is Ramsey. That's because, for a trivial reason, go back to my rectangle. If this configuration is Ramsey, then so is this subset of it. And that's any right angle triangle. What I want to stress for later on, though, is that if someone said to you, why is, here's a right angle triangle, why is it Ramsey? You don't start to work with the right angle triangle. You first say, embed this ugly asymmetrical object in a beautiful symmetrical rectangle, and you get to work. Okay. Yeah. If you think about cuboids, and you think for a sec, you think about a cuboid, which I'll attempt to draw a cuboid, a bad cuboid. If you think about it, you can put a triangle into that as long as the angles are less than 90 degrees. So also, so any acute angle triangle is also that. Acute, I mean, all angles, most 90 degrees. Because you, you, you just find you can embed it into the, you embed it into this thing somehow, whatever. Okay, so that's plenty of examples of Ramsey sets. How about an example of a set that isn't Ramsey? So let me claim that this can, on a line, take three points, say a distance one, I claim that's not Ramsey. So how do I convince you of that? I've got to find you an actual number of colors K so that the Ramsey property fails. So I've got to give you a K and I've got to give you a coloring of R to the N for every N in which you don't find a monochromatic copy of this i.e. three points in a line or distance one. Okay, let, let's see how we do that. So if I, what's a copy of it means the following, that some may have a point x, an x plus e, and x minus e, where the norm of e is one. I'm writing norm for Euclidean length. Okay, that's what we, that's what we want to destroy. Now, there's a parallelogram law that relates lengths of these things. It says the length of x plus e squared plus length x minus e squared is length of x squared plus, sorry, two plus two, this two being length of e squared. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to promise that our coloring of a general R to the N will be in concentric spheres. It'll just depend on the, the length squared of x. So we, we promise to color x by some function of the norm of x squared. So if this is the origin, we're coloring out in, in some shells in some way or other, okay? So it's each sphere around the origin gets a certain color. Now, how would we destroy this? You'd want a coloring of non-negative integers, non-negative reals, sorry, so that this is, this is never true. So you, we would need, for some k, a k coloring of the non-negative reals 
such that there is no solution of this, meaning A plus B equals 2C plus 2 with A, B, C, monochrome of the same color, right? If I can find you such a coloring of the reals, I've got my clever color of R for any N by coloring by this color of the length squared. Actually, this is actually very easy to do. You just, you just color, use four color by X mod four, if you prefer integer part of X mod four. Um, so if you think about why that works, could you suppose you had A, B, C, all the same color, where they were all between zero and one mod four, right? So color zero. Now, if A is between zero and one, and B is between zero and one, then that's between zero and two. But equally, if C is between zero and one, then two C is between zero and two, double it between two and four, so those don't intersect. Of course, when I said between two and four, I mean two at most T less than four, so I'm not cheating. Okay, so, so, so that's pretty easy to do. Great, so not, not every set is round, so that's a good start. So which sets are Ramsey? Um, so this area was started by, it's a paper listing basically six incredibly great names in Ramsey theory, but I left out the, I left out Erdős, so I should start again. It's by Erdős, Graham, Montgomery, I think it's Rothschild next alphabetically, it is. Rothschild, Spencer and Strauss. In a few papers in the, um, in the 1970s. And what they did was they introduced the notion of Ramsey they showed the things I've just shown about products, and they showed a very nice fact. They showed that if X is not spherical, spherical means you live on the surface of some sphere. So for example, notice that a rectangle in a cube is spherical, but notice that three points in a line not spherical. So they showed implies X is not round. So I'll tell you how they did that, by the way. Um, you remember we had our exciting parallelogram law, three points in line. And notice the key thing for the later construct was this plus two. It wasn't plus zero, it was plus two, i.e. constant. Now it turns out that for any set that isn't living on a sphere, it turns out that there's a similar parallelogram law you can write out. Some other coefficients ending with a non-zero constant. So there's some equation you want to wreck in the reals. It's, it's rather harder to wreck in general. Here, it was a kind of in your face, easy construction. In general, what you do is you, you find structure over the rationals that works, then you extend by another element, another element. So you have to well order the, uh, you have to well order the basis for the field and so on. So it's a well ordered argument, uh, but it works. It's harder than this, but it can be done and it's true. Okay, so that's how they showed this isn't Ramsey. And their incredibly famous conjecture, which has dominated the area, is that that's the only obstruction. So their famous conjecture is X is Ramsey if and only if X is spherical. So it's absolutely beautiful conjecture it's dominated the area. Okay, so let, let's see what's progress is made towards this. Um, I'll just say that in general, each bit of progress is incredibly hard. So I'll write down a list of results now, but in a slow talk, I'll be stopping and praising each of these results enormously because they're very, very clever results. So where, where do we first start? We want to show every triangle's Ramsey, of course. We've done, we've done right-angled and acute-angled, it turns out every transamsy, that's proved by Frankel and Rödel in the 1980s, they showed triangles are all Ramsey. Every triangle is Ramsey. 
how about how, how about say tetrahedron that isn't regular or general simplex so frankel and rodel also showed that simplices are Ramsey. Okay, so what would we then most interesting open question be? I guess we've done a regular triangle, regular foregone I square, I guess regular pentagon would be the next interesting case. That was open for some time, and eventually Xiz in the 1990s was able to show that pentagon is Ramsey. Regular pentagon is Ramsey. Actually, he did more than that. He showed that a regular n-gon is Ramsey for every n. So it's a very, very nice result. So regular n-gons are Ramsey. So that I, there's a, if there's a, a cyclic symmetry. He proved a little more, which I'll mention later on, but the heart of his argument, the really clever, innovative stuff, is doing the cyclic case, this, this thing here. Okay. And that's essentially all that's known. This conjecture is open. It'll be open at the end of this talk as well. Okay, so <coughs> the starting point for me and Mark Walters and Paul Russell was to notice that in all these proofs here, you start by embedding your set into a transitive set. Now, if I say a transitive set, I mean, I mean, all points look the same, right? I have a symmetry group acts transitively. So for example, a rectangle is transitive, uh, but a, a triangle, unless it's equilateral, is not transitive. So you'll remember that when we did a right angle triangle, what was our first step? We said embed it in a rectangle. So we embedded in a transitive set. Rectangle's transitive. Now it turns out in these proofs here, of course, here you already are transitive to a regular end on. You, you start by embedding your set in a transitive set. That's always the first step. Of course, then once it's in a transitive set, there's lots of clever maths and amazing difficult rounds theories to do. But that's somehow always the first step. You always start by going to some beautiful place where all points look the same. Oh, let me quickly convince you, by the way, that every triangle lives inside a transitive set. I mean, of course, a finite transitive set. Let me convince you of this fact. So, and by the way, this will not be the transitive set Frank Leroux, just a transitive set. Just to give you the idea, transitive sets are important. So let me start by taking a triangle where this angle is a rational multiple of pi. Okay, so I'm taking a general triangle, some unpleasant, yucky, horrible triangle where the angle is rational multiple of pi. Now, why does this triangle live inside a transitive set? Here's why. Consider reflection in the midpoint of this edge. Okay, that maps this point to this point. Now consider reflection in the midpoint of this edge here. That maps this point to this point. So these two reflections, the orbit of this point includes all three of those. And also, what do they generate? A finite group. Right, I've got, I've got two reflections, an angle which is, you know, multiple of pi, so it generates a hedral group. Okay, so this is a finite group, so the orbit of each point is finite, and that, that's a transitive set, and all of this contains that. Okay, good. So we, now we know that any triangle with a rational angle lives in a transitive set. To do a general triangle, here's what you do. You take your triangle in the plane, and you imagine rotating it out of the plane along that axis, okay? So imagine taking your triangle and lifting it up. So this edge is fixed, this point comes up out of the plane towards you. What do you see if you look from above? You see this point coming down, don't you, if you look from above, right? 
So eventually you'll get to a case where the angle is rational. In other words, what I'm saying is, if you take your triangle and rotate it about one of its sides in three space, eventually from above, you'll be a nice triangle. But notice your set, your triangle, now lives inside a rational triangle cross in the z direction zero a for some a, because these have height zero, that's got height a for some a. And this, of course, trivially embeds a transitive set because embed this is a transitive set, a transitive set, two copies is still obviously transitive. Okay, I stress again, that is not the transitive set that Frank LaRue will use, but I hope it convinces you that you can embed a triangular transitive set and same for simplices. So our idea was, since all proofs seem to rest heavily on transitivity, maybe that's the key. So here is our rival conjecture, our conjecture is that X is Ramsey if and only if it embeds the transitive set. Okay, so I'll, I'll write X is transitive. Of course, what I mean is, or a subset of. So that's somehow our kind of rival conjecture. I'll, I'll, we don't know if it's true or false, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll say a I'll say a little bit about it. Um, one reason why it's quite appealing is that it would instantly imply that Ramsey sets must be spher spherical. Here's why it's true. Um, take any set of points in any R to the N, there's always a, a circumcircle, a, a minimal sphere containing it. That's an easy check, by the way. If you have two spheres that contain a set, then the intersection is living in a smaller sphere. So there's always, there's always a circumsphere, you might call it. Now, obviously, by uniqueness of a circumsphere, any symmetry of your set preserves a circumsphere. So any symmetry of your set cannot map a point inside to a point on the edge. And therefore all points are on the edge, are it's a spherical set. Okay. So it would tell you a lovely reason with no, no zorn and weird well ordering about where I'm set to be spherical. Okay. So let me now try and convince you with some other interesting things about our conjecture. So let me write, as conjecture one, that's conjecture one, Ramsey, so, so I'm sorry, let, let, me, let me delete that. Let me talk about the direction about where we'd like to show transitive sets of Ramsey. The other direction, we only have some heuristics, no actual proofs, so I'll spare you any thoughts on the direction. I'll talk about the, con the direction transitive implies Ramsey. And by the way, you have to like this conjecture, this direction, because even if you believe the original conjecture, you'd still have to prove that all transitive sets are Ramsey because they're all spherical. So you can't escape having to prove the following conjecture, X transitive implies X Ramsey. So we've got to prove this. Um, just by the way, um, whenever you do prove that a set, a trance of sets Ramsey in all known examples, what you actually prove is that if X is transitive, then for any K, the set X cross cross X is K Ramsey. For X. What I mean is that the big thing you color is a pro lots of copies of X. It could be scaled. I mean, think for example about a unit interval, zero, one, right? When I said, take a, a K simplex, we're done. You could have taken the points one, oh, 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 one, oh, 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 one, oh, oh, and so on. Those all live in my set X to the power of five. And they're, okay, they're pairwise distance root two, not pairwise distance one. So you scale it, you get pairwise distance one. So all I'm saying is, 
In every known case, we want to prove that there's a wonderful set that when you k color it as mono x, the set is always a big product of copies of x, maybe scale. I think nobody I know, nobody believes that this could be true without that being true. But officially it's different. It's the strongest, I'll call that conjecture one prime. Okay, so that's conjecture one prime. So it turns out you can do a very interesting thing. Conjecture one prime is about transitive sets. So that means a set, Euclidean set, with a group that acts transitive symmetries. It turns out you can remove the geometry, which, okay, you might think is a bad thing, but it's probably a good thing to make things simpler. So it turns out there is a, a conjecture two, which is a groups statement. I won't, I won't say what it is. It's, it's a similar thing. It's about given a finite group for every K, in G to the end, something nice happens. I won't say what it is, which implies conjecture one prime. So it's quite nice. I'm saying is you can you can take the you can take the geometry out of it and just have a group statement, and then you can take the groups out as well. You can get down to a purely combinatorial statement. So let me tell you conjecture three. It's a totally combinatorial statement. And we call it the block sets conjecture. And this conjecture, again, will imply this, which will imply that, but it also turns out that if this is false, that's false. So they're actually all equivalent. So, that's, so I'll tell you what conjecture three is. And it turns out it's equivalent to the statement transitive implies Ramsey, or, or conjecture one prime rather. So we actually, we've lost nothing. If you could wreck this combinatorial statement, you'd have wrecked this. So let me tell you what the block sets conjecture is. I've got to tell you what a block set is. So we're living in, uh, let's say the set one up to M to some large power. So long strings of, of numbers, okay? And I'll tell you what a, block set in one, two, three to the N with template one, two, three years. Here's what it means. You write down a word and it's a bit like Hales Jewett, but it's not Hales Jewett. Um, you write down a word I want three varying places, okay? So I'll write down a word in one, two, three, one, two, one on three, A, A, three, one, A, B, C, B, one, one, one. Let's have three of each, B, C, C. So I've written down a word here and I've got three A's, three B's and three C's and the, the rules are you're allowed to substitute for each of A, B, and C, one, two, three, in any order you like. Okay, so this word, one, 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 two, two, two. This word's in my block set. So is the word where A is made to two and B is made to one. Two, 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 one, three, one, one. Okay, so, so the block set equals all the three factorial ways to replace A, B, C by one, two, three in some order. Is that making sense? Okay, and you would say it, it, it has um, size equals three. That's the number of A's or B's or C's you prefer. You could also ask template one, one, two, three. So how about if I asked for template one, one, two, three, that means the same thing. I've got to tell you a word. Now, of course, there'll be an A, a B, a C, and a D. There are four slots. A, two, one, B, C, D, one, one, A, D, two, three, C, B. And the rules would be, Whenever you insert 
for two of the letters A's, the other two B and C, sorry, two or three of the same color. So for example, I would want to be able to insert, say I did A and B as one, 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 two, two, three, three, and, and so on. In, in, in all permutations, okay, that will be a block set template one, one, two, three, and now it's got size D is two. Each, each block has size two. Okay, here's the block, here's conjecture three. It says that for every M, the alphabet size, and for every template T on M, so like one, one, two, three, or one, 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 two, three, there exists a dimension and a size, very important to specify both, such that whenever M, I'm one up to M, to the N is K colored, this is for every K as well, of course, is K colored, there exists a monochromatic block set template T size D. You have to specify the D, it's very important. If you are allowed to choose D yourself, this would be instant by Hell's Jewett or things like that. So it's very important that D is a fixed number. Okay, so that's the block. And then it's a totally combinatorial statement, right? So it says, for example, with one, one, two, three on alpha of size three, one, one, two, three, it says, if I want a K color and guarantee a block set with one, one, two, three, or rearranged, I can always do that. So it's something about some permutation or something like that. Okay, what do we know about this? We know, well, okay, M is one is kind of trivial because this is the one point world, isn't it stupid? How about, how about a world of size two? How about a template say of some ones and some twos? That's fine. That's just, it turns out that's just Ramsey's theorem. So if you think about the, the template um, of some ones and some twos, then it's true for that. Okay, so it is true that if you want to color words in ones, long words in ones and twos, you can always find your favorite template in there. Okay, so on to three letters now. One, two, three, we know. A lot of ones, a lot of twos, and three. We know. So when I write this, I mean any word in ones and twos, right? Sorry. Lots of two, three, but we are stuck. We don't know one, one, two, two, three, three. So that's the first fascinating case to us. So again, if this is, if the block sets conjecture is true, then we know all transfer sets are Ramsey, it'd be fantastic. And if it's false, then we know it's, it's not true. So it, 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 this seems to be a very interesting case. And there's a reason this seems to be of particular interest. So Kajiz's result, he gets, I told you he did cyclic groups. You can also do a quotienting, so you can get to groups built of cyclic groups. He gets soluble groups. Soluble which means built out of cyclic groups. But he, he can't get beyond soluble. Now, conjecture two, the one about groups, which I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you that, but anyway, believe it exists. So Karamanlis, Karaman and Kanelopoulos proved it for G-soluble. But again, they also can't get beyond soluble. And it feels like in all these three, the obstacle seems very similar. It's hard to put your finger exactly on. For example, this one's group, symmetry group itself is soluble. So it's not the, its own group, but somehow the, the things that stop Kajis extending beyond soluble and the things that stop 
Karamanlis can love us going for the world. And the thing that's about us doing this seems to be the same kind of obstacle. Right? Maybe it's indication that they're false. We just we just don't don't know. Um, in my last minute, so this is the most stuck at the moment. I'll just mention that I've told you the original conjecture, which was that um, Ramsey equals spherical. I've told you our conjecture, which is Ramsey, if it only if contained in transitive. Um, it was only after we working for more than a month that it even crossed our minds. Why are these different conjectures? I mean, they're obviously they've got different words in them, right? But are they different conjectures? Does every finite transitive set embed in a sphere? That's yes. Does every spherical set embed in a transitive set? And you won't say no, they're different definitions, but this is actually really hard to, to separate them. And it took us quite a long time to separate. Eventually, we were, we were able to show that almost every cyclic 16 gone. So, okay, so in the plane, points living on 60 points on a circle is not contained in a chance of set in a dimension. Of course, and this means in a dimension. And after that, it wasn't constructive. And then later we found, so the last thing I want to mention is an explicit example of a set that is spherical, but embeds in no transitive set. So I want to end by showing you an actual set that the original authors would believe is Ramsey. We believe is not Ramsey. Here's the set. Here's the unit circle. So the following points, take the point one zero, minus one zero. I want to take a, a beautiful symmetric kite. You know, it's a symmetric shape here. This is the point A, root one minus A squared. This is the point A minus root one minus A squared, where A is transcendental. So it's not obvious, but it turns out this beautiful symmetric, I reflect that this foregone is spherical because I've drawn it on a circle, but it doesn't embed in any translating dimension. And so this will be a fascinating test case separating these two conjectures. We'd love to know if this is Ramsey or not. We've tried so hard to prove or disprove, but we're stuck. So I'll stop there with that example. Okay, let's first thank uh, Imret for the nice talk.